Our keynote speaker is Michael Santos. A little bit about Michael. He spent 26 years incarcerated in the federal prison system. While in prison, he received an undergraduate degree and then a graduate degree. He became an author. And since leaving prison, he has become an outspoken advocate for criminal justice reform. Please welcome Michael Santos. What an exciting time for me to be a returning citizen in this amazing room with this amazing organization. And I want to start by telling you what I did this morning. So first of all, I've been out of prison for just a little over five years. My journey started right here in this community. And my pathway to building a life of success and meaning and relevance and contribution really began not too far away in the Pierce County Jail, and I want to tell you that story today. But I want to start with how I started this morning. I went to visit the amazing Pioneer Industries, which isn't too far away, on the near in the Duwamish area, of, I think it's South Seattle. It, it's been 30 years since I've been here, but I, it's, it's just south of uh, downtown. And I walked in there and was just totally blown away and inspired by what I saw. There's a young man there by the name of Greg who'd been in prison for 30 years. But now he leads a team of people, more than 85 people, who are currently paying taxes, supporting their families. He is now a homeowner living on a river and getting up in the morning at 1230. And one thing he told me that I will take into prisons across the United States is I never hit snooze when I wake up in the morning. Instead, he is always focused on how he can bring value to the team that he serves. And he is exactly what I think about when I think about what is the best possible outcome that our prison system can create. What do we really want? As taxpayers, it's something that I think every American citizen should be thinking about. And I want to say I'm really inspired and encouraged by seeing such an amazing turnout for such an amazing organization because I believe, or would guess, that many of the people in this room have never thought about imprisonment. But I get really impassioned, so I'd just love to take this thing out and just move around a little bit because you have no idea how exciting this is for me. You have no idea how grateful this is, how grateful I feel to be in a room like this with so many community leaders, government leaders, business leaders, advocates who want to help people become better. And I want to share this story of what my experience was like and why I think that Pioneer Industries and Pioneer Home Services is just really such a change maker, such an organization that can really have an influence in building safer communities, in reducing the ancillary consequences of mass incarceration, which influences every American citizen. And the reason it influences every American citizen is because if we're spending $100 billion a year to incarcerate people who are serving sentences that are far too long, that many of people could be working to uh, working in organizations like this. And of course, the foundation of this organization began with a formerly incarcerated person. So I am just filled with optimism and inspiration after visiting my hometown. I'm here with my wife and my mother-in-law, Linda, who's in the audience. And it's the first time I've, I've had an opportunity for her to hear my story. But I'm going to share it with you right now. Before I do, you've got to realize I only have 25 minutes or so, and I'm going to be conscious of that. I've got my awesome technology here to remind me of how far I'm going. But I will tell you, this technology, you know, is something that's totally new for me. When, when I went to, my wife gave me an iPhone when I got out of prison, and I put it next to my ear, and I said, you know, this thing is broken. She says, what do you mean? I said, there's no dial tone, right? I mean, there was no internet when I got out of jail. There was no email. There was nothing when I went into the system. But I want to tell you why I really feel strongly about the mission that Pioneer is doing and why I really feel it is incumbent upon every American citizen to begin thinking 
about what are the best possible outcomes of our criminal justice system. Because it was different when I went into the system. Right? I grew up on the north end of Lake Washington and Lake Forest Park and uh, graduated from Shorecrest High School by the skin of my teeth, if they might say, if that's the right cliche. I mean, I was a terrible student in school. My wife went to school with me at Shorecrest, but she had the good sense to stay away from me when I was a kid because I was making every possible bad decision a kid could make, choosing the wrong friends, lacking the character and the dignity, I think, of, of many of the people in this room, and I was just drawn to a faster life. And as a result of that faster life, I, I looked for mentors and leadership where I should not. In fact, one of them was uh, the, uh, you know, the character Tony Montana from the movie Scarface. I saw that movie when it came out and just thought, this looks like a super cool way to live. And uh, moved to South Florida and started pursuing that path. And boy, that was the wrong decision. Because I was arrested in 1987. I, I started making these bad decisions when I was 20 years old. And when I was, 1987 came, I was taken into custody in South Florida, where I'd moved from here to South Florida to pursue this career that didn't work out so well. Um, was arrested and transported back to jail. I think I was held in Kent City Jail first, uh, then Pierce County Jail because they kept moving my jurisdiction around, and I got tried by the, by the, uh, the, the, the jurist Jack Tanner in Tacoma's courtroom. And when I was arrested, I wasn't quite ready to accept responsibility or to reconcile with society. And so I continued to make a series of bad decisions that included um, pleading not guilty, even though I knew I was guilty of everything they charged me with, uh, going to trial, um, taking the stand during my trial and perjuring myself on the stand. And there's nobody to blame for that with, but me. And it's something I know that a lot of people who go through the criminal justice system, they, they may not know when is the right time to become a good citizen. And I will tell you, it didn't happen for me until this very awkward phase from the time that I was convicted and the time that I was sentenced. And the reason that happened is I was facing a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. And I'd never been in custody before, so I had no idea what to expect. I had no idea what was coming, but all I knew was I really hated being in jail. And there was a terrible message in every jail where I was held, and that message was that the best way to serve time is to forget about the world outside and focus on your time inside. And I want you to know that message doesn't only come from the people who are serving time. Unfortunately, it also comes from the system itself, which is why we have this systemic problem of mass incarceration. Because instead of a community where we're talking about thinking about how can we get the best possible outcome, which is what I see in Pioneer, you're saying, you're giving a message that says, I don't care anything about your life after you get out of prison. Uh, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. Um, you got nothing coming. And this message is one that extinguishes hope, and it's the fundamental opposite of what we should be presenting in America. Instead, in America, we should be thinking about how do we get from where we are to where we want to go, and really, what do we really want? We want a criminal justice system that results in the type of people that Pioneer creates. We want a criminal justice system that creates people who want to be taxpayers, who want to be law-abiding citizens, who want to provide for their family, just like we saw on that amazing video that played before the luncheon. And so we don't get that in the criminal justice system. But to change that requires people from every sector of society. It requires people who are leaders like each of you who need to be thinking instead of what do we have, we need to be thinking about what can we create? How do we get there? Because if we have this message of mass incarceration, we have to look. We don't have to take my word for it. You can look at historical data and see that what we have is modern slavery where we're warehousing human beings, we're extinguishing hope, we are removing them of the ability to function in society by using technology like this. 
And we are telling them that we don't care about your life when you come home. And as a result, the people come home and there is nothing for them to do. And so there is, a, there is this message when those people revert to the types of problems that bring them back into the criminal justice system, it's very easy to point our accusatory finger at them and say, look at what a failure he is, rather than saying, what did I do as an American citizen to improve the outcomes? I can tell you that we can do a lot more, and every human being has a role in improving it in some kind of way. Even somebody like me, who was in prison for 9,500 days. But like the man I met this morning, who served 30 years and is now a leader and a role model at Pioneer Industry and an inspiration to me, I never hit snooze. Even though I was going through 9,500 days in prison, I absolutely believed that I had a duty and a responsibility to reconcile with society to prepare myself in ways that would lead to a life of meaning and relevance and contribution, and that drove me through every single day. And I would love to say that was my idea, but it really wasn't. I can't take credit for that. I have to give it to the masterminds and the leaders who inspired me. And the one that inspired me first was when I was in a Pierce County jail cell, number four north, I don't remember the cell number, but I do remember the unit number. And I felt so awful and humiliated at what I had done to my family for the first time. Up until that moment, I wasn't ready. But I had an amazing sister, who's in the audience right now, I'm just so proud of her, who really gave me the reason and the inspiration that says, I have to do better. Because at that time, I was living without hope, and I was even suicidal and just thinking, how am I going to get through this? Because I'm facing life in prison, and I have no idea what that means. But my sister was just telling me, you can do this. You can be stronger. And so, you know, I do what many people do when we're in struggle is you just, you just ask God for help and strength. And those prayers led me to, you know, you, you, I didn't, I was, when I was praying, I wasn't asking to get out of jail. I knew that that ship had sailed. I wasn't going to get out of prison. I, instead, I started to just ask God, give me the strength to make it through this. And it was those prayers that led me to this philosophy book. And at that time in my life, I don't know how to spell philosophy, much less know what it means. But I'm turning through the pages and I read this story about Socrates, who's in jail waiting for his execution. And I I'd heard about Socrates, but I was a little surprised to turn the first pages of reading the story of the Crito and how he is in jail. And uh, he has this opportunity to escape his jail cell. And that's all I wanted to do was get out of jail. I wasn't ready to think about the, the harm that I had caused to society, the victims that, that, that suffered because of my role in distributing cocaine in, in this community. All I was thinking about up until then was my own problems, not even accepting that I had created those problems. But I read Socrates' story, and when he had this opportunity to escape his punishment, he listened, and what he said, instead of escaping... He said, no, I'm going to stay here. And his friend Credo said, but you're going to die. And Socrates said, yes, I'm going to die. And I, I couldn't understand that. And his friend said, but why would you do that? And Socrates' response changed my life. Because what he said was, he said, we live in a democracy. And in a democracy, we all have a right and a responsibility to make the world better. We have the right to change laws we don't agree with. We don't have the right to break laws. And so it's kind of like what's going on here. You could be a change maker. And if you're a citizen, you have a role, and a role to try and be a change maker. And so I remember lying back on my rack, because it wasn't a bed, and I'm feeling the, the walls kind of suffocating me and closing me in, and I remember thinking to myself for the first time, wow, I really went down a bad path. I really, I mean, I, I didn't go to prison for like the reason that Socrates went to prison, trying to 
educate people and help people grow better. I went to prison because of selfish reasons of trying to be Tony Montana. And I, and I remember lying in that cell and just saying, I'm feeling, remembering seeing my sister cry for me and, and my father and mother, the, the, the pain and suffering I'd caused them and my grandparents wouldn't talk to me and, and so many citizens wouldn't talk to me and I was, my trial was covered in the newspapers and it was humiliating. My sisters would tell me they'd go to get their hair done and somebody said, did you hear about this drug dealer, Michael Santos? They got him, you know, and they, they'd say, well, I don't know. You know I don't know what they think. <laughs> but it was, it was just, I, I caused so much pain to so many people and didn't even realize it. And I used to delude myself. Well, there are no victims in my crime. Um, you know, they were all consenting adults, but I was wrong. I just wasn't ready to change my life. And I needed that story from Socrates to change my life. So at that time in the jail cell, you know who I start thinking about is I start thinking about people like you, law-abiding, tax-paying citizens who just want a better society. And I start thinking, is there anything at all that I can do while I'm in here? Is there anything that I can do that will cause people to see me not for the bad decisions that I made when I was 20, but rather what I'm going to do when I'm in here? And it's that, you know, Socrates is the father, of course, of Socratic questioning. And it's that kind of questioning that really starts to change my life. And the first answer to that question is yes, there probably is. But what is it? Because I'm getting a different message in prison. I'm getting a different message from a system of corrections. I mean, just the irony of calling it a system of corrections. The longer we expose somebody to corrections, the less likely that person is to be able to come out and function with the outcome that we want, which is all the more reason why we need leaders like the people at Pioneer, because the systemic system is to create intergenerational cycles of failure. And we have to say, what can we do differently? What can we do better? And I'm lying on that jail cell, and the kind of the answer comes to me. I have to stop thinking about myself and the problems that I created and start thinking about what can I do better. And it doesn't matter what I can do. What matters is what people like Andrew could think about. Andrew Over, who's a sponsor of this organization. What would he want from me? And I come up with this three-pronged plan. One of them... I'd say, well, Andrew and Karen and all the leaders in this group, what would you want? You would want somebody to work to educate himself. Because if he worked to educate himself, that would reflect a commitment to living like a law-abiding citizen. You cannot fake that. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. One thing, I'm going to focus on educating myself. But that's not going to be enough. Number two, I would have to focus, number two, on contributing to society in some kind of meaningful, measurable way to show I definitely want to be a citizen. So what else could I do? Well, number three would say, I need to find and build a support network. Because if I can find people to believe in me, then maybe I'll have another chance at coming back to society. And so that's what changed my life. And at that moment, I drew a line in the sand, and I said, this is the day that I am done living as a criminal. And I hadn't been sentenced yet. So I know the day of reckoning is coming. But fortunately, I had Socrates, and then Mandela, and then Malcolm X, and then uh, Viktor Frankl, and then, you know, so many other philosophers that I started to read that said, hey, you can become something more but you've got to stop living for yourself and you've got to think about what can you do to build a better community and a better society? What role could I have? And so I said, okay, the first thing I have to do is I have to draw a line in the sand. And I got on my bed. I was so inspired, right? I mean, there was a time in my life when I used to be filled with passion and energy. You know, I'm not like this whole 54-year-old guy now that's been in prison all his life. And I remember sitting on my jail cell and writing a letter to the newspaper and saying, hey, I made a lot of bad decisions. I want to do better. And, you know, if you want to know the story, this is the day I'm going to change my life. And the journalist came out and he interviewed me inside of the jail. And, you know, I told him my story and it says, front page, top of the fold, drug kingpin says he's going to change his life. Oh, you're all laughing, right? Because you know what happens when we hear that message, right? It's just, oh, yeah, sure, he just wants to get a free pass. But I knew there was no free pass. For me, I was envisioning a day like this when I could look back. 
and say, that was the day that I changed my life. And that newspaper was published. And then I'll always remember just how receptive our criminal justice system was to that message. Because at my sentencing a couple of weeks later, I will never forget the words that the prosecutor spoke at the sentencing, which are indelibly etched into my memory, when he stood up and he said, Michael Santos says he is going to change his life. But we believe that if he spends every day of his life working to make a better society, and if he lives to be 300 years old, our society will still be at a significant net loss. And that is the criminal justice system that I went into. And when I thought, this is awesome, because now I know where I stand. I am going into an environment that is exquisitely designed to extinguish hope and to demolish anybody's possible chances of coming back as the amazing success stories that Pioneer creates. And I, and I climbed through that journey with enormous amount of gratitude because I was inspired by Socrates. And when I walked out of prison in August of 2013, I was ready. And I made a commitment to my wife that I will build my career out here and become successful in society. And at the same time, I'm going to work to build bridges that connect formerly incarcerated people and incarcerated people to the job market, to the labor market. And I'm going to work to spread awareness on the greatest social injustice of our time, which is mass incarceration. And it is with great pride and gratitude that I have the enormous honor of giving this little small message to the amazing nonprofit of Pioneer because it really is a change maker. And it is leaders like you that make it possible. And I can tell you this is the fulfillment of a dream for me that began in the Pierce County jail cell to come back to a community that I love and try to change in some small way. And I take this message of what I learned today at Pioneer and I penetrate prisons across the country by creating hope for people inside to help them understand that the decisions that you make today will make all the difference in how you come back tomorrow. And one of the, after seeing this, I'm, I'm just a one person operation. I don't have a big team and I should have done this before. I would have been better prepared, but I'm gonna ask, tell you something that I did I just had this idea after seeing them today. I wrote a book, many books, while I was in prison. My story is very public. But I wrote this book called Earning Freedom, Conquering a 45-Year Prison Term. And after seeing this place that I just had this idea, I said, um, if any of you want to read this story or learn more about this story, I hope that you will visit the event's website because I've made a commitment to donate or, or to say anybody who orders one of these books, the proceeds are going to go 100% to fund Pioneer because the work that they are doing is incredible and I'm just so honored to be here and to share this message and I want to do more. But I'm, you know, I'm still building my life. I just wanted to say this is an incredible organization. It would have changed my life at the start. It would have changed the thousands of people, the hundreds of thousands, the millions of formerly incarcerated people's lives if only more people knew. And remember, it's every stage of society, employers, it is correctional staff, it is legislators, it is every person in the society has a duty and a responsibility to learn a little bit more about this gross, gross social injustice and think about what is the best possible outcome and think about what can I do to contribute in that kind of way. And I never ask anybody to do anything that I am not doing and so I just will let you know I'm out of time I'll give everything I have to try and improve the outcomes of this system because it is a part of me. My goal was to be able to get out of prison, put on a suit and tie, come back to society, and nobody would know I served a day in prison unless I told them. And every decision I made put me on that path. And to be able to stand here in front of all of you and share this story is really a fulfillment of a dream. I have immense gratitude and respect for this organization. And I just want to thank you all for giving me your attention and allowing this to be a, the fulfillment of a dream. Thank you so much.